It's been roughly a month with the RX 9070 and my switch from NVIDIA, and I wanted to share my thoughts and opinions on this card. I got the RX 9070 at just above MSRP at $649 on launch day. It came a few days later, and I eagerly shoved it into my PC for testing. But testing is one thing. Real world is another. The settings at which everyone plays games and test settings can vary wildly, with some choosing high quality and other folks opting for high frame rates. The biggest surprise from this card is that I didn't expect it to perform so well. In every game I play, I choose the settings that sit somewhere between getting 100 frames per second and the highest quality possible. Nearly 100% of the time, that means not using ray tracing, the largest tax on any video card. Frame generation is another setting that I only choose in single player games where I want to try to match my monitor's 165Hz refresh rate. That being said, my time so far has not led me to any moments where I wish I had more ray tracing power or multi-frame generation, two of Nvidia's main selling features. The RX 9070 so far has given me higher frames and higher quality with lower power draw and lower temps than my previous Nvidia card. Here are some examples of the games I play at real world settings. Before we start, all my games are running at 1440p with ultra or a mix of ultra and high settings. FSR is used where supported. In a game I have 2700 plus hours in PUBG, I play at 1440p with a mix of high and ultra settings. We hit an average frame rate of 180 to 200 frames per second with no help from upscaling. The 9070 hits boost speeds of up to 3.2 GHz while temps and power usage remain at really good levels. Another game I play a lot is Madden 25. With everything set to Ultra, I'm seeing frame rates of 160 to 180 depending on what's going on. The cutscenes drop frame skewing averages in the stats a little bit, but we see as high as 220 frames per second in some instances, more than enough for smooth gameplay on a 165Hz monitor. Red Dead Redemption 2 is another winner in the 9070 lottery. With frame rates in the 160 range and everything set to ultra, it's a gorgeously smooth Wild West experience. I'm hard pressed to tell the difference in quality between this card and my old 3080 to be honest. Cyberpunk 2077 at high and ultra settings with FSR native AA and frame generation enabled, how I play it, gets 180 to 190 frames per second average. There is no noticeable increase in latency with frame generation enabled and it looks beautiful and smooth. In Stalker 2, again using FSR native AA and frame generation, we are getting 120 to 140 frames per second. Everything is set as high as it goes and the 9070 is chugging along without issues. For me, this is the best playing experience for this game and I'm pleased with how this card performs. The Last of Us Part 1 takes advantage of frame gen and native AA as well, getting between 160 and 200 frames per second depending on the scene we're in. Again, we're at ultra settings and the experience is smooth and beautiful. I can't stress enough how cool and quiet this card runs even when totally maxed out. I've seen a huge boost in frames and smoothness from my old Nvidia card in every game I play now. Though not every game uses FSR, the raw rasterization performance of the 9070 still pushes out a lot of frames for its power and core clock levels. After a month of use, I don't feel the loss of DLSS at all. These older eyes are hard pressed to nitpick at any quality difference and overall gameplay has not been affected whatsoever. So if ray tracing is super important to you, I recommend the way more expensive Nvidia cards. If you're like me and don't really care either way, I would choose the AMD card hands down for its value to performance ratio. Personally, I choose quality and frames over pretty reflections any day. If you have questions about the 9070, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If this video was helpful to you, be sure to drop a like and subscribe. Thanks again and I love you people.